and, and we've talked about this, but let's go. Like, what are you excited about? For me, I, this is an old running back. So what I, I mean, I when I used to go back and coach, my favorite or what I did was work with the running back. That's what I knew, and I loved it. I loved it every because you can see in these guys who wants to learn how to be better and who thinks, oh, I'm the greatest because I've been the greatest my whole life. You know what I mean? I feel mm-hmm. like he will get those guys out. You know what I mean? I, I one, one of the things that I really like about him, and I mentioned it before, is the attention to detail. He's worked with guys like Jamal Charles in his prime. We've seen that Adrian Peterson coming out of college. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like even even these other guys that we've we've just seen, Pacheco, McKinnon. McKinnon has been around the league. Will you know this? Uh, if you any fantasy owners know this, right. he gets around the league and he has mm-hmm. a couple weeks during the year where he dominates. Yeah. But he's not a number one guy. But in that offense. You take McKinnon and you take Pacheco out of that offense to get the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. They don't win that game because they held, they ran the ball and controlled the clock in that second half. And you're just sitting here like, I'm not going to draft these guys number one, but right. you would be good. You'd be better off if you have them on your team. And just to see, like, like you said, he'll take anybody. He'll take anybody, and as long as they can fit the scheme and run it, I am super, super excited about that. Obviously, also the championship pedigree. He's been around, um, and, and I, I'm just thrilled because I am somebody that's very attention to detail, especially with all this stuff that we do. I'm very much like, you know, hey, it, got, it has to be done this way. I understand how you see it, but it's going to be done this way. And I get excited and animated about it. It's because I love this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I see in him. That's what I've heard from people. They all say that he's – He's really into it. He's into it. He's really like going really down to that fine new mini detail. Going to go to the Super Bowl play. Chiefs are driving down the field. He's got a little bit of time left on the clock. They run a play and they have McKinnon. McKinnon is running. He's running down to the end zone and he has an opportunity to score a Super Bowl touchdown, mm-hmm. tell his kids and grandkids. What does he do? He slides. A lot of those players, and even Mahomes is saying, you know, that's something that Biennemi works with us in practice. That's something that he gets called the church mode. You know, these plays and these situations that may never occur, you know, may only occur one time in the entire season. But that one time, it's muscle memory. You know it. You've done it before over and over and over. So I'm super excited for the running backs, the position we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And I want to see I don't want to see what he does with my guy. I want to see what he does with Sam. The last guy he had was a young yes. Patrick Mahomes. Yes, they had Andy Reid, but as you've seen, Patrick Mahomes and him were working one-on-one, and he wasn't afraid to get in Patrick Mahomes' face a couple times this year. And I like that because he's saying you're not too high, you're not too low for me to sit here and talk because I know the way things need to be. So I'm excited for what he brings, especially in the, between the running backs and the, um, and the uh, quarterback. Absolutely. Absolutely. You you touched on the part that I'm most excited about. And anytime you have a young quarterback, that is going to make things even more exciting to kind of see what someone can do. But if you kind of look at there's some parallels here, you know, Kansas City drafted a quarterback and he sat for a year and then they brought him in in year two and they, you know, they found a way to make him successful. And now Washington is doing the same thing. And, you know, I, I hope that he had a chance, and I'm sure he did, to watch and see how they – what did they do with Patrick Mahomes in the beginning to make him start off so hot, so comfortable? Yeah. It, it had to be more than just talent. It had to be the ability to to make the game easier for him. Yeah. And that's exactly what you want for a young – I'm just going to call Sam Howell a rookie quarterback next year yep. because it's his first year starting, you know. And so that's really important. You know, they talk about what, how Kansas City utilizes RPO game. Howell mm-hmm. can run that. He ran that in college. Let's play to his strengths. You well, know, they, where do you they, go to college? At will where do you go to college? Yes, <laughs> yes. Let's yes, go. Did. Did, didn't they lose in his last bowl game? Oh, didn't they get their bowl? All right, all right, all right, all right. Move on, Will. <laughs> <laughs> um, they talk about how they utilized you know short, quick passing games, yes. the, the creativity. Yeah. You know the different shuffle passes they would use with Travis Kelsey and you know just just quick games that we talk about ways to make the quarterback you know have 
quick routes that he has to figure out, it, you know, just making the decisions out there where he's not having so much going through his head that he's overthinking while out there and he can just go out and play. So I think it's going to be really interesting to watch the dynamic and how he grooms Sam Howell and, and works with him. Um, I think it, it may be a little bit of a slow process. Like, I don't think – I mean, we're all going to be excited week one, but I think we need to recognize those first four games could be a really learning opportunity for – because. You know, Sam's got to learn a new offense. He's got to yeah. learn a whole new terminology now. You know, so there's going to be some some building blocks with that. I read something today or heard something that really got me excited. Apparently, Bienemy was their clock management guy in Kansas mm. City. Mm. And how often we have that. we complained <laughs> about how we handle the two minute warning in our timeouts? Yep. And the fact that like the what we noticed uh, this past year was like we don't ramp it up unless we get a first down and then we say okay time to go time to go and at that point we've wasted a minute and 40 seconds right. you know out there it's like we had the ball at two minutes two minutes and 30 seconds and now we've just drained all that clock because we're taking forever so i think you're gonna see i'm really hoping we see some new age thinking on how to use the two minute warning and your timeouts and how to utilize the fact that there's a chance to build momentum, get, you know, get points and get the ball back. You know, if yeah. we, if we receive the kickoff, you know, at in the second half, that type of stuff, but utilize this more new way, new analytics way of thinking where it's, it's your maximizing possessions, maximizing opportunities. So hearing that got me really excited. I'm like, Oh my gosh, yeah. Ron needs that so bad. Yes. <laughs> um, so that, that could be a positive. And like I said, I, I am just most excited about the fact that he's bringing credibility to the, to the building immediately. And he's coming from a place who's not just done it at a championship level, but they've said, okay, we've got a young quarterback. Okay. We need to make sure that, that he's comfortable. Let me show you how we're going to do it. And he lays it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and one more thing I wanted to touch on going back to the attention to detail is that, you know, one thing we looked at in the Super Bowl, they were down 24 to 14 with the exception of that, you know, scoop and score, that was 24 to seven. That offense was a bit with pedestrian in that yeah. first half. They came out in that second half and really like changed the whole dynamic of the game. Started running the ball more, started eating up the clock, started keeping the Eagles offense off the field. And one thing that we noticed when we played them that whole second quarter, they were on the bench. By the time they gave back in late in the, in the second quarter, they were cold to the point where A.J. Brown wasn't getting catches. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Devontae uh, Smith wasn't getting uh, getting uh, loose. So them that those adjustments they made in the second half, I think that's going to play a huge role for our team, especially in this coming year with a young quarterback. With, you know, we've got a young O-line, uh, certain young O-linemen are young. We got running games that, you know, it's a lot of younger guys, young wide receivers. We are going to get, like you said, it's going to be a slow start. I can see it going, we get being like three and five early in the year, kind of like how RG3's career started, where it was like three and six, and then we hit hit the stride. But mm -hmm. I think that's what it's going to be, where it's going to be picking up, learning each other, how learning how the enemy is in those situations, and vice versa. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I, I showed you actually in the group chat, um, they showed the offenses. They showed the offense that he was leaving and the offense that he's gaining. Now, obviously, Mahomes, head and shoulders above, that's a huge weapon to leave. Kelsey, number one tight end, huge weapon to leave. But then you start breaking down some of the rest of that offense that they had. You know, Pacheco and McKinnon at running back. I think Gibson and Robinson, if they're not on the same level, they're a little bit better than them. Yep. And then they were showing me their wide receivers. They had Juju Smith-Schuster. I'm, I'm taking Terry all day over Juju uh -huh. Smith-Schuster. Period. That's just me personally. And then they looked at the other side, and they were saying Valdez Scantling, Kadarius Tony, McCole Hardman, all good in their own right, but they're that much better with Mahomes and the threat of Kelsey. Yeah. We got uh, two guys in comparison to that, and Jahan Dobson and Samuels that have proven they can take over a ball game. Mm -hmm. So honestly, you know. And I get the Kelsey and Mahomes thing definitely lift their average up. But I think in the grand scheme of things, and, you know, X Factor, we don't know how Sam Howell's going to be. I think in the grand scheme of things, he, you know, he ain't he ain't dropping too far down with offensive production. And he might – and none of our guys have egos. You know what I mean? Not saying Mahomes has the ego or Kelsey, 
but I would understand if they would. Right. I mean, they're obviously the best players in the league. So, but not, we got guys that hopefully are ready to learn, ready to work on it. And I, I'm just loving the enemy first year OC in Washington, Sam Howell, truly first year quarterback in Washington, them meshing together. Woo. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I'm, I'm hyped about that. Absolutely. Yep. It's great. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, I never thought Ron would be able to, to get a home run higher with this. Like you said, who would have thought this would be a place that someone of his caliber would want to come to? Cause right. it, it just, it brings a lot of opportunity. And like you said, we have weapons. There are individual skill players that, that he can now, you know, play with and toy around with and, and really, you know, bring out their best. So I'm with you. I'm, I'm extremely excited about that opportunity. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, now you have any more uh, excitement? I mean, I want to pour out all of our excitement too early. I know. I know. <laughs> nope. Thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the let's talk football community. And as always, please like subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.